In this podcast episode, physician and author Gabor Mate discusses the topic of aging, regrets, and the pursuit of longevity. At the age of 80, Mate reflects on his life, his experiences, and the lessons he has learned along the way. Mate shares his experience of turning 80, describing a warm and celebratory party thrown by his loved ones. He acknowledges the significance of reaching this milestone age and the realization that time is limited. Despite the numerical value of 80, Mate finds a sense of ease and acceptance in his current stage of life. He notes a shift towards self-expression and a softer demeanor, indicating a journey towards greater authenticity and self-acceptance. The conversation delves into the five regrets of the dying, as outlined by palliative care nurse Bronnie Ware. The first regret, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me, prompts Mate to explore the concept of courage and authenticity. He emphasizes the impact of childhood trauma on the suppression of one's true self, leading to physiological and emotional consequences. He highlights the importance of self-expression and living in alignment with one's values and desires. When discussing the fear of death, Mate acknowledges the uncertainty of how one will respond when faced with mortality. Drawing from his experiences with plant medicine and spiritual insights, he reflects on the potential for a shift in perception towards death. While not inherently afraid of death, he recognizes the need to confront his feelings when the time comes. The conversation shifts to the societal obsession with longevity and the pursuit of extending lifespan. Mate expresses his disinterest in the longevity movement, emphasizing the importance of living a meaningful and engaged life in the present moment. He challenges the notion of growing older by questioning what it truly means to grow in wisdom and appreciation for life. Mate explores cultural views on aging, drawing parallels to indigenous cultures that revere elders as sources of wisdom and guidance. He contrasts this with modern society's tendency to dismiss the elderly, highlighting the value of age and experience in shaping one's perspective on life. The second regret, I wish I hadn't worked so hard, resonates with Mate, who reflects on his own tendencies to prioritize work over personal well-being. He delves into the underlying drivers of overwork, including the need to validate one's existence and prove one's worth. He emphasizes the importance of self-care and setting boundaries to prevent burnout and maintain a healthy work-life balance. Mate touches on the societal shift towards a me-focused culture where individual achievements and self-improvement take precedence over community and connection. He highlights the importance of feeling valued and appreciated by others, stemming from early childhood experiences of acceptance and validation. Mate delves into the impact of childhood experiences on self-worth and emotional expression. He explains how societal norms and parental expectations can shape an individual's perception of themselves. The suppression of emotions in childhood, often to gain acceptance or approval, can lead to a disconnect from one's true feelings later in life. He emphasizes the importance of allowing children to express their emotions freely and without judgment to foster healthy emotional development. The concept of impressing others is explored in the conversation, with Mate questioning the societal emphasis on being impressive. He challenges the idea that one's value is dependent on external validation or the opinions of others. He encourages individuals to focus on being true to themselves rather than seeking approval from external sources. He highlights the importance of self-acceptance and authenticity in cultivating a sense of intrinsic value. Mate discusses the role of parenting in emotional development and the importance of validating children's emotions. He distinguishes between permissive, authoritarian, and authoritative parenting styles, advocating for a balanced approach that acknowledges and supports children's emotional expression. He emphasizes the significance of creating a safe space for children to experience and express their emotions while also setting appropriate boundaries. The third regret of the dying is I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. Mate explores the connection between emotions and physical health, emphasizing the importance of expressing one's feelings and not suppressing them. He highlights the pioneering work of medical professionals like James Paget and Jean-Martin Charcot, who recognized the connection between emotional factors and illness. 
Matei discusses how bottling up emotions can lead to stress and burden, ultimately impacting one's overall well-being. He encourages listeners to be aware of this connection and to prioritize emotional expression for their mental and physical health. He stresses the importance of addressing emotional well-being in conjunction with physical symptoms to promote holistic healing. Mate acknowledges the gap in medical training regarding the importance of emotions in health and wellness. He emphasizes the need for healthcare professionals to recognize the role of emotional factors in illness and to integrate this understanding into their practice. He suggests that doctors can refer patients to mental health professionals or counselors for emotional support, even if they are not trained in psychological interventions themselves. The value of human connection and relationships is a central theme in Mate's discussion of the regret. I wish I stayed in touch with my friends. He emphasizes the importance of maintaining friendships and nurturing personal connections, even amidst the busyness of life. He reflects on his own experiences and highlights the significance of prioritizing relationships and celebrating the bonds we have with others. Mate delves into the fifth regret, I wish I let myself be happier, stressing the importance of being present in the moment and allowing oneself to experience joy. He discusses how societal suffering can sometimes lead individuals to feel guilty about experiencing happiness, but he encourages listeners to embrace happiness and playfulness as essential aspects of a fulfilling life. He shares his own journey towards finding happiness and contentment, emphasizing the growth that comes from letting go of regret and embracing self-compassion.